thing. And then we'll get going because people may have been scared off by the weird glitch, but I will confirm in the rest of the courses that I've got the proper Zoom link. That's very frustrating. But welcome, Jody. Welcome. Um, tonight's a kind of a fun class. Um, I've never hosted this one before, but when I found it, I thought, oh my God, this sounds wonderful. And it actually, I started looking for it because there'd been a post a lot earlier about making um, a London fog just by using oils, hot milk, and water, boiling water. And uh, I thought that was just fantastic. And it was just basically a couple of drops of bergamot oil, some milk, and then fill it with boiling water. And it was like the perfect London fog. And I thought, well, that's damn cool. Um, and um, really actually good for you. So I went looking and sure enough, there's a fabulous um, coffee and tea class that, uh, so I've adapted it for us and um, we'll just get going. So welcome everybody. Um, this class really is about incorporating Young Living Oils into your coffee and tea recipes. Um, there's even some really great recipes uh, towards the end for homemade creamer and oil infused sugar so that you can have these things ready in your fridge so that you don't have to do a lot of concocting in the morning when you really just want a cup of coffee. <laughs> so let's get going. Come on. So the first thing that I like to talk about um, is um, you, um, why Young Living. Um, but um, the, the part about Young Living that I truly, um, that sold me on the company was their uh, seed to seal promise, which is their control of the growing and distillation process right from the time the plant is a seed going into the ground all the way through the growing phases, the harvesting phases, and then the distillation and bottling. They have very tight regulations, um, actually stronger regulations than um, organic in most company, uh, in most countries. Um, and I really valued being a small farmer myself and having bees, a beekeeper, um, I really valued their um, their choices to not use pesticides and herbicides, to hand weed, and to really focus on the health of the soil at their farms. And they open their farms to people to visit. So if you want, you can go and you can visit these farms and confirm for yourself that this is the way um, that they, they operate. And that truly, for me, is what sold me on this company. Um, now, essential oils, have a lot of different uses and today we're going to talk about one of them and there are three kind of schools of thought on essential oil use in the English model the French model and the German model. Now the English model dilutes all essential oils with carrier oil when they're applying them to the skin and it's mostly for the purposes of relaxation. The French model typically applies the oils without a carrier and also includes ingesting, like eating or drinking them in um, how they work with essential oils. The German model focuses on inhalation of oils. So that is the aromatherapy part of it. So there's really three kind of ways of using essential oils, inhalation, topically, and ingestion. Young Living, because of its strict um, uh, farming practices and distillation practices in food grade dis uh, distillation um, containers um, can combine all three of these so that you get like the triple benefit of using essential oils um, in, in your life. Um, and always, always, I encourage everybody to do their own research, to look up um, on the internet and to go slowly and to work with what's best for your particular family. Some, you know, every, every family is different. And um, this is such a great journey to learn about what works for you and your family and how to incorporate these products. If you choose to ingest Young Living Essential Oils, um, they make it really super easy for you to know which ones are generally regarded as safe to do that with. And they have a white label. I forgot to get my white label. Um, bottles up here, but they have a white label. Now the white label in both Canada and the United States indicates that these oils have been approved as food. The colored 
um, labels on bottles tends to have labeling that reflects its use as um, topical or inhalation, more a cosmetic labeling. So there's two kinds of labels, a cosmetic labeling for external use and a white labeling for internal use. The oil in the bottles, whether it's a white label or a colored label, is exactly the same oil. Right, so that's a really, really key thing to remember. It's exactly the same oil, but because one is food and one is topical, they have to be labeled differently. And all of the oils that you will see today being recommended are white label bottles. But if you wanted to try an oil, a drink when you went home and say you had um, a cinnamon brown label, you could use it because cinnamon comes with a white label as well. So if you wanna to check to see which ones um, of the ones you might have already are safe, you can go to the Young Living website and look up the, um, the bottles in the Vitality or Plus line, depending on which country you're in. And if it's got a white label, then it is generally regarded as safe. Um, these oils have also been non-GMO project verified and just like all Young Living products are backed by that seed to seal commitment that I talked about. So um, you can also check out on the Young Living website lots more information about seed to seal. They've got some great uh, videos and very uh, in-depth information about that. The final thing I'm going to say about this is that each batch of essential oils that is distilled has uh, testing done by both internal Young Living Labs and third party facilities. So you know when it's coming out that what's in that bottle, what, say, what it says on the label is what's in the bottle and that it's gone through the entire safety process for Young Living. That's important because a lot of the oils that you buy in a store can say frankincense on the label and have cedar wood in the bottle that's made to smell like frankincense because there's very few regulations over smell and things that are labeled as fragrance in products don't actually have to be identified um, on the label because those are considered trade secrets. Fragrance is considered a trade secret. So that is the technical side of it. Um, so now let's get into some of the very cool uh, recipes. And um, like I was saying to Jody, I'm uh, taping this and I will put this on YouTube so that you can go back and get recipes um, for as much, you know, as often as you want. So the nice thing is, is that not only do you get great taste out of these oils, but you do also get some health benefits because these are the um, um, uh, very, um, uh, this lifeblood basically of plants. And this, these are the essential components that keeps plants healthy. So first up is lemongrass plus or lemongrass vitality, depending on which country you're in. So this oil is beautiful. It's full of, it's a bright citrusy flavor, but it has this kind of herby kind of undertone to it. So I'm like lemon, which is like powerful lemon. This is more of a, a earthy lemon. I like to think of it as an earthy lemon, but it gives awesome zing to foods and beverages. In Thai cooking, this Vitality Oil is fantastic because if you don't have lemongrass in your fridge, you can use this as a replacement. You can also drop some into a cup with some honey um, and hot water or your favorite tea, and it just absolutely perks that right up. Now, one of the things I've been trying some of these recipes over the week, and one of the things that you can be really careful of is that uh, you don't want to get too much in the cup. <laughs> so super, super helpful tip is when you're making one of these drinks, use a toothpick into the, into the bottle of oil and drop a little bit, like even less than a full drop into the cup. Otherwise, um, you can kind of blow your own head off. I had a, um, a cinnamon coffee yesterday that like literally cleared my sinuses because I think I got like a drop and a half in my big mug and it was so cinnamony that it made my eyes water. So a toothpick inside of the plastic reducer lid will get you just enough of the oil to flavor your drink, but not overpower you. Um, 
my favorite, my favorite oil really of all time is orange. Um, our new perspective oilers page orange is like the, the theme. It is the most summer smelling thing that I can think of. I just love it. So it is just packed with um, limonene, which is a fabulous antioxidant um, and digestive support product. It doesn't have as much as lemons, but it has quite a lot of itself and with a less of a zing. Um, it is. It does have a great zestiness to it. And not only does it taste fantastic in uh, smoothies and ninja red, but adding it to hot or cold tea is lovely. My favorite way of using orange, however, other than diffusing it, is to put it in pound cake. It makes the most delicious orange pound cake. You can put a little bit even into the, the icing that you put on top. Um, but you, you could also use it to brighten up a chicken dish or fish um, and um, just really give that kind of liveliness that you need. One thing that you need to know about all of the citrus oils, however, is that you need to use uh, stainless steel glass or ceramic when, um, when you're using oils, uh, citrus oils to, for baking um, because it will all of the uh, citrus oils will break down petro, uh, the petrochemical components in plastic. So no citrus in plastic. Do you like um, citrus in your tea, Jody? I, I do, I do. I didn't, but I do have a question. I know sure. that essential oils will break down petrochemicals. I thought it was all essential oils, but you're saying it's just the citrus? Well, the citrus are, are the strongest. Strongest, okay. And so, and so no plastic at all. I think you can kind of get away with plastic for a short term. I don't use plastic yeah. drinking vessels anyway, but with citrus, you really have to be careful because they are so strong in it. They, they'll do it quickly. Okay, perfect. Especially things like water bottles and um, cups and things like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Glass or stainless for drinking water, especially. Yeah, perfect. All right, let's move on to the next two. So. These are a little less sweet and a little more earthy and herby, um, but lavender is fantastic. Now we all know that lavender really helps with sleep. Honestly, it's, and it, and it really is like the, the most um, flexible of all oils. It helps general wellness. If you're going to do a cleanse, it helps with that. It does have antioxidant properties and it does help settle nerves. Um, rosemary has um, eucalyptol. So uh, the same component that you'll find in all of the eucalyptus oils um, and alpha pinene, which is kind of a, a piney scent flavor. Um, and both of those things can help maintain overall wellness. But um, they also go really well with tea and coffee. And side note, martinis. <laughs> Um, lavender is kind of sweet and slightly floral. Um, you have to be careful how much you use because it can get, get a kind of a perfumey feel to it if you use too much. But boy, oh boy, is it ever good with chicken and lamb. Really nice with potatoes sometimes. And if you mix it with um, some spices like marjoram and oregano, um, it really pairs nicely. Gives a little bit of a, of a more um, fresh, uh, feeling when they kind of got the heaviness of the rosemary and the marjoram. Um, but just adding a little bit of it to some tea or some lemonade. I think I've posted on search on the tea on the group later, um, lavender lemonade. There's a recipe on that is in the summer, the most beautiful, um, gentil kind of drink that you can ever imagine short of a mint julep. You kind of think you're in some really fancy place just having this beautiful um, lavender lemonade. But lavender also goes really well with chamomile tea. So that's really nice. At bedtime, both of those things are extremely good at helping relax you and get you prepared for a good night's sleep. So combining them together in a cup of warm tea before bed is beautiful. So now rosemary, I think we all associate with like chicken or turkey dinners, uh, maybe a, a roast and Italian cooking or focaccia bread. So it's a pretty herby, quite profoundly, you know, flavorful, strong oil. 
but it does actually go kind of nice in coffee and tea. This is one of those ones you got to be super duper careful how much you put in so that the um, toothpick will come in very handy. So if you mix rosemary oil and a tablespoon of maple syrup uh, into some milk or cream and froth the milk, woof, a little dash of salt, and you have a beautiful coffee drink. Beautiful. That one, um, the, the, something about the, the, the treeness of the maple syrup mixing with that rosemary tones down the strength of the rosemary and just gives you that kind of, oh, it's, it's very, it's beautiful. So if you froth the milk and add a drop of rosemary and a tablespoon of maple syrup, there you go. Your guests, or if you serve that to friends, girlfriends, they'll think you are just amazing. All righty, so. Any questions? No, I'm just taking some notes on these recipes. I'm looking forward to actually trying some of them. Yeah, so there's there's some really good ones here. Um, okay, so now mints. We oh my god, we all know peppermint. Next to rose, next to lavender, peppermint is like the the superhero of the oils world using it for things like migraines and muscle aches and upset stomachs. And I like it in the car when I'm feeling a little car sick. I don't, um, I don't put it, I don't ingest it. I just put a little bit on my tummy and it really helps uh, my kind of motion sickness. Um, and tip for anybody who, if you're traveling and you get a little constipated while traveling, a drop of peppermint oil in the toilet when you're trying to go to the bathroom helps relax you to go easier. That's a good tip. Works amazingly well. Um, after large meals like Thanksgiving or Christmas or even Easter, whenever, just a big meal, very nice. That's why the restaurants always handed out chocolate mints, but peppermint as a mint is so soothing to your stomach. Um, and um, spearmint, is a much softer, more candy-like smell than peppermint. Also has naturally occurring downfall, limonene, which is the same thing that was in oranges, um, something called carvone, and it can help calm tummies and support digestion just in a less potent kind of a way. So probably really good with kidlets um, instead of like the nuclear um, peppermint Having a little spearmint might be a little uh, easier on their hypersensitive uh, senses of smell. Um, now, peppermint, we all know, goes so good with chocolate. So if you're making hot chocolates, one little drop of peppermint in there just to give it that oomph will make it taste like the, the most classy uh, peppermint chocolate you ever had. Um, and um, spearmint, again, is because it's a little milder, it, uh, it can go into things that you probably don't want overpowered. So I would use spearmint in tea um, because sometimes peppermint I find is, is too much, and, but I would still want that kind of minty freshness. Now, it's also good if you're wanting to um, do oil pulling in your mouth to get, uh, to get rid of bacteria, put a little um, spearmint into some coconut oil and then suck it through your teeth. Helps to clean out and then spit that out. Spearmint is fantastic in iced tea in the summer. Make a jug of iced tea, like just regular tea um, on the stove, let it, let it steep until it's the strength you want, pour it into a container, add some um, honey and some spearmint. Oh, it's beautiful. Very, very, very refreshing. Both these oils will actually cool your body down if you're hot. So our, uh, a little spritz of this is very helpful if you tend to get too much sun at one time. Let's talk a bit about lemon. Ooh, lemon. I buy a lot of lemon oil because I use lemon oil for everything. Um, my dog gets some sap in his fur. I use lemon oil. I got a sticky thing on the bottom of something I can't get off or a label that I can't get rid of the glue, lemon. Um, cleaning your windows, lemon. Cutting the grease, lemon. It is awesome. Um, so 
Um, lemon has huge antioxidant properties and does help support both the immune system and circulatory system, helps to cleanse. There is a, a, a program called the Master Cleanse out there, and it, fu it functions based on massive quantities of lemon, of drinking lemonade to really cleanse out your system. Um, so lemon is well known to be a very good um, a cleansing system. So if you're wanting to do that in the, in the spring to just get your body nice and cleaned out, it's a beautiful oil. Um, uh, the nice thing about the lemon and the lime and the citrus oils in general is that the oils are made from pressing the peeling of the fruit and not from the juice. So it is not nearly as acidic as um, having say lemon juice in your water. If you put a drop of lemon or a drop of lime in your drinking water, it's not going to be as hard on the enamel on your teeth because it's not as acidic. So lime is very interesting because it supports the lymphatic system, the respiratory system and the immune system. Now your lymphatic system is the system that cleans all the junk out of your body. So supporting it with some lime in your daily water or your tea is very a very good way at um, um, getting healthy after you've been sick and trying to just clear your body out. So of course you can use either of these in your tea, both hot or cold. Um, you can also again use them in your baking. So lime cupcakes, lime cake is delicious. Um, and um, you can replace any um, recipe that calls for lemon juice or lime juice with a drop or two of the oils. Um, lime adds huge flavor to your cooking. Um, and I just like it in a hot, in some hot water with honey um, or in a um, green tea. It's, it pairs very nicely with green tea because it's a little lighter and it's a little livelier and um, the kind of earthiness of the green tea and the lime go beautifully together. Jade lemon does works nicely as well. Uh, well, so here's what I tried the other day. <laughs> cinnamon bark and ginger vitality. Oh my God. Um, so cinnamon bark um, is highly, 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 highly concentrated. I strongly recommend using a toothpick because putting a drop in your, in your cup um, is probably way too much spiciness uh, for you. Um, although it, you know, it's not going to hurt you, you're probably not going to enjoy that coffee so much because it is so cinnamon forward. So you can substitute cinnamon bark oil in any recipe that calls for ground cinnamon. So um, I think on the group page, there's also a, a what's it called? It's a chart of how much to use. So if they call for a teaspoon, this is how many drops of the oil you would use. But if you're going to use it in your coffee, um, it's beautiful in cappuccino. Oh my God, it's just fabulous in cappuccino. Um, use a toothpick, just a little swirl um, and put it into the grounds before you brew the coffee and let the water, the hot water force its way through the grounds and the oil. Um, and the smell in your kitchen is worth the, uh, um, the trial anyway. Uh, but it's beautiful with coffee. Add a little little sprinkle of um, chocolate flake or cinnamon uh, powder over the top of the uh, whipped frost milk and you have the best coffee shop cinnamon coffee you've ever had. Now uh, ginger vitality um, is, is also very very nice. Now it's naturally occurring con um, uh, constituents are all around digestion. It, they really, ginger is really super good at helping with your digestion. Um, very good at helping calm um, acid reflux. Um, it is distilled from the root of the ginger plant and is really, really good to keep in the kitchen because it, you know, it lasts a lot longer than having a fresh root in your kitchen. It makes a great addition to tea so good in tea, black tea or green tea, um, uh, any of the rubios or any of that, you know, a little bit of ginger just will warm it up so that when you drink it, it just kind of fills you with warmth. It's also very good if you're feeling under the weather and you take 
um, just a mug of hot water, um, a swirl of ginger, a swirl of lemon, and um, drink that as hot as you can. It will help you sweat. It will help you to sweat out whatever um, uh, crappy bacteria is going on in your body or virus and um, start to help you feel better. It will help you sleep too because that sweating is so good. Um, so we're almost to the actual recipes part here now. Um, is there any questions? Anything that you think you want to try first in those things? You know, the rosemary one actually has me intrigued. So I think I'm going to try that. Um, I just want to verify with that one, you talked about the maple syrup, the froth, milk or cream with a touch of salt and the rosemary. Yes. You add that to coffee or just to hot water? Just to hot water. Oh, I just hot water. I think it's just, yeah, the frothy milk, hot water, and that. Okay. But Perfect. I think, you know, like if you're thinking about it, I would I would add something like rosemary because it's so strong, more to coffee, I think, than tea. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Although the maple syrup in tea is very good. I think you yeah. could just play with it until you found a combination that you loved. Yeah, I think so. I generally don't have anything sweet in my tea. Yep. But I mean, I'm definitely willing to try this. I also think too, maybe adding a syrup or something will help that water, help the um, oil to kind of get incorporated in that yeah. water a little bit more. Yeah, it'll be a little more. It'll it'll bind to that um, the the sugary content and disperse a little better there rather than floating on top. And I think that's how it actually balances out the strong flavor of the rosemary is that it kind of binds to it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the first one I'm definitely going to try. Well, oh my God, when you try it, post in the group to tell us how it goes because I am fascinated. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I will definitely do that. Okay. So these are the three final um, plus or vitality uh, oils we have in all of our recipes. So thieves, um, vitality. Um, Again, like lemon thieves is one of those things that I use for everything. And actually before I go to bed, I have um, every night a hot mug of water with a scoop of our honey and a drop of thieves. It just um, cleans my mouth. It makes, um, I think it, it removes all the bacteria that I've gathered through the day. It relaxes me and um, I sleep much better when I remember to do that. Nutmeg vitality. Um, also, again, a very strong uh, oil um, helps um, with cognitive function support, immune support, and antioxidants. Nutmeg is also extremely helpful to your endocrine system. So if you've been under a lot of stress and you've been having, you know, fight, flight, and freeze, or you just have had a lot of um, cortisol flooding your body because of the amount of stress, nutmeg is a very uh, supportive oil for that system and helps to relax that cortisol response. It's one of the ones that is really, really um, recommended uh, for adrenal fatigue. And then cardamom vitality. Now this one, so I came to cardamom very late in life, but um, I adore cardamom. I love it in rice pudding. Um, it's, it is a kind of a flowery, um, exotic flavor. But it also really supports a healthy lifestyle because it's such a powerful antioxidant and it helps with your digestive system, which is why at Indian restaurants, instead of chocolate mints, they have cardamom that you can take and eat because it helps to settle your stomach. Okay, let's look at some tea. So here's a wellness tea, really super simple. A couple of drops of thieves, a couple of drops of lemon. This is my nighttime tea. Some honey to taste. So you could add only enough honey to just, just mellow out that thieves and lemon a little bit. And then some hot water and a tea bag. And off you go. I, I tend to um, even leave the tea part out. Um, but some, some teas have also very good properties for your wellness as well. So again, using either... Um, so you either use a toothpick or put the drops of the oil into a spoon so that if you get too many, you can kind of squoosh some of it off and you don't kind of overwhelm your cup. Um, or you could make a bigger pot um, and then use the spoon to stir all it in. This one 
is what I'm trying this week. Coconut cinnamon tea. Oh my God, doesn't that, that sound fantastic? So it is full fat coconut cream. So you can get coconut milk and you can get coconut cream and coconut cream is just a more concentrated, less watery cream. And you should find that one or two drops of thieves, a little bit of honey or sweetener. You could use stevia, you could use agave syrup. Um, you could use maple syrup, whatever you wanted, a tea bag of your choice and some hot water. So while the water is heating, you just mix the coconut cream and the essential oil in a mug. You stir in the sweetener and then um, you drop, you add the hot water and drop the tea bag into your cup. And then you let it steep for three to five minutes. So you get quite a strong tea, stir it again, take the tea bag out. And oh my God, doesn't that sound good? It sounds so good. Sounds like something you would have on a veranda on a holiday somewhere. Just that kind of luscious coconutty feeling with the, the cinnamon and the clove and the nutmeg of thieves. What type of tea are you going to use? I think for this one, because I'm using thieves, I'm just going to try black tea first. That's what I was thinking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thieves is pretty strong and I think it would overpower green tea quite quickly. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, and then the coconut cream is quite rich. And so I think I'm going to do a black tea with this because that just sounds fantastic. Mm -hmm. We have a little Asian market here, so I've got to go and find some coconut cream. But yeah, I'm looking forward to that one. So here's a really fantastic one, spiced chai. So lots of people get a chai at Starbucks, at any kind of um, store that you're going to. Um, I don't know what they use for their chai, but at least with this one, you know exactly what's going in there. So you've got lemongrass vitality, which is lemony, but not so overpowering, a little ginger, a little cardamom to, to sweeten it and to floral up, to bring up the floral, um, a chai tea bag, some honey or sweetener. So again, um, agave or stevia or honey or nothing. Um, some hot water and some froth milk. Now it says optional, but I think this just cries out for froth milk once, once you've made it. Um, so add your hot water to a mug, drop in your tea bag. And while the tea is steeping in your cup, froth your milk. Then pull out the tea bag, add your oils and honey, and then top it off with your frost milk. What an extravagant, beautiful cup of tea that would be. And the chai will bring its own kind of flavorings, which the lemon, ginger, and cardamom will just like elevate, I think. So that one, that's a beautiful mug of tea. Really nice on a really bleak wintry day. Okay, so let's talk about coffee. Here's one that is going to surprise you. Lavender latte. Yeah. You're right. I am surprised. <laughs> I, I know. Hey, like who would ever thought to put lavender and espresso together, right? So make, make two ounces of espresso, get some whole milk, one or two drops. I would start with one drop. Of lavender like always with essential oils less is more to start with because you just never know it could get quite perfumey tasting i think so um add what you like get your espresso uh, brewing and add a little bit of essential oil to the cold milk and then warm your milk um and get it frothing and then pour that steamed milk into your espresso and if you've got some dried lavender flowers that's the height of um uh, luxury there. Um, I've got a bunch hanging beside my kitchen sink, so I could use that or leave it out, right? And then try it and see what you think. The um, strong, strong flavor of espresso, and the it almost lightens the lavender. Like it's it's quite remarkable how it just balances it out. These things are just. I was like surprised that that's where the lavender went. Yeah, this might make me uh, a whole new coffee connoisseur. I was just kind of a black and plain coffee girl, but now I'm like, oh, look at all these ways I can get my essential oils in every day. This is kind oh, exactly, of exactly right. And think about, you know, you have a couple of girlfriends over for coffee or something, serving them this, they'll think that they've gone to a spa. Yeah. 
be awesome to have at a at a home party too if you're if you're showing people about essential oils to have just some of this for people to try to see the kind of variety of things that you can use this for because it's such a good product this one doesn't surprise anybody peppermint mocha i mean peppermint and chocolate is the marriage made in heaven add a little coffee to it and some cocoa powder holy crap that's fantastic that's the best hot adult hot chocolate you could ever have i think yeah. beautiful so basically two cups of whole milk two cups of strong coffee two tablespoons of cocoa powder one to two drops of peppermint vitality chop some chocolate syrup and some whipped cream oh my goodness sakes christmas eve that would be beautiful christmas eve just Everybody sitting around, having just talking and having one of those mm. little snow outside be perfect. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So here's another one that's going to surprise you. Rosemary lavender latte. Oh my god. Oh yeah. Today, I know. Like rosemary surprises me. It was the most surprising thing out of all of this was that rosemary was here because it's just you just think turkey dinner and so strong. But uh, this one uses oat milk. You could you could yeah. use any kind of milk that you wanted, but oh, this one uses oat milk. Um, two drops each of rosemary and lavender. So this is pretty strong, but it's because you're using it in a shot of espresso. So what you do with this one is you combine the milk and the honey and the oils in a saucepan and you bring that to a boil. So that kind of just mixes everything really good. So the oil and the honey probably combine. And then the milk just it, it disperses through the milk better. You froth it, you froth the milk then and pour it over some espresso. Beautiful. I, I I'm really gonna experiment with rosemary because I just am so surprised by it. So here's a couple of really cool next recipes are oil infused things you can have on hand to pour into something when you just feel like something quick. So this one will be delicious and not for the calorie conscious. <laughs> so it's a can of sweetened condensed milk, a cup of heavy cream, a cup of whole milk or half and half, and then four drops of the oil of your choice. So you could use any kind of oils, you, you know, depending on what you were making it for, if you were just having it for a regular day or for a special event, um, you could, if you, uh, you could do um, a cardamom nutmeg clove combination that would be really kind of evocative of um, um, iced coffee in a place like Thailand. You could use peppermint for Christmas, um, thieves and ginger if you were really trying to warm up a bleak day. Um, but you could use almost any of the vitality oils, the plus oils in this creamer recipe to make any kind of um, combination that you liked. Um, iced coffee, you could use this in iced coffee and make a blend would be just beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you get to decide what you have. So it, once you make this, you can store it in a glass container and um, keep it in the fridge. And then before using, just shake it up a bit. Um, and um, th this recipe actually is created to fit within an empty Ninja Red bottle. So if you have an empty Ninja Red bottle, you can save that bottle and put this creamer into it in your fridge, and um, it will store it will store like a month or two in the fridge. Okay. So nice way to recycle the Ninja Red bottle too. Yeah. So another option for planning ahead for these things is oil infused simple syrup. Mm. So simple syrup is just water and sugar that's been cooked and um, a vitality oil of choice added. Um, and really you just, you just stir these in a pot until the sugar dissolves and then you allow it to cool before adding the essential oil in. And then you only add it, the oil one drop at a time until you get to the desired taste. So in this one, I would use a teaspoon and drop into the teaspoon, stir it in, taste it, add another drop to the teaspoon, stir it in, taste it because then you're going to get it to the, to the strength that you want and not kind of go over the edge with it. And this uh, can be stored in the fridge until you want to use it. 
Um, and you can add one to two tablespoons to your brewed coffee. You could also add this quite nicely to tea, especially depending on what um, oils that you use. It would go very nice in green tea. If you use the cardamom and um, ginger, that would go beautifully in a green tea. Um, Chinese or Japanese green would be mm -hmm. very nice. Um, even some of the more um, leafy teas like Hawaiian tea, this would go really nice in. It's not as much of a tea as more of a tisane because it's plant-based. And then the third option for ready-made things is oil-infused sugar. Now, I thought that this would be the coolest Christmas present to make for a coffee or tea lover in your life. So you take a couple of cups of sugar, you take three to five drops of your Vitality oil, whatever kind you want. I think the citrus oils would be beautiful in this. Um, you add the sugar to an airtight container and add the oil, you stir it and allow it to sit overnight. And then you could, you could wrap, uh, package it in really beautiful little um, glass containers and give to someone um, for a Christmas present and use them in coffee or tea. You can use um, any kind of sugar that you want, raw sugar, um, white sugar, uh, cube, like the crystal sugar that you can get in the Asian stores because you just are letting it infuse into the crystalline structure and the oil will saturate even the, the rock sugar. That would be quite a pretty thing in a container is some chunks of rock sugar that have been fused with essential oil. A little bit bigger, so you might want to crack them with a hammer before you infuse them, but I think it would be a very pretty gift. And then the final thing, oil infused ice cubes. So make some coffee. So cold brew the coffee, add the Vitality oil, and then uh, put it to an ice cube tray and use it in um, cold, like your iced coffees. Instead of, um, you, could, you could blend it up in an iced coffee instead of using just regular um, ice because regular ice kind of dilutes the flavor. This would actually heighten the uh, coffee flavor and the oil flavor. Yeah, I currently take my, like if I have leftover coffee, I will, I will make coffee ice cubes so that, you know, that I can use that to, uh, instead of diluting my coffee with yeah. ice cubes. But my only concern would be, I know with the plastic, right? Yeah. With the essential oils. Now I do have, how, how are essential oils with silicone? I have I do not have heard, silicone yeah. ice cube trays. I've not heard they're bad, but what I would do with the plastic ice cube trays is I would, I would freeze them and then take them out and put them into another container, into a, like into a glass bowl and store them that way. I don't think that in the 12 hours, uh, for, yeah. the 12 hours for freezing, that it would be as big of an issue as if it was all day in your plastic drinking bottle. Got right? it. Okay. Yeah. And I would take them out of the, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, these would be really nice mixed with that um, oil infused creamer in a, in a coffee mm -hmm. drink. Oh my mm -hmm. God. The richness of that would be just to die for, mm -hmm. to die for. Because I really like iced coffee. I love um, Thai iced coffee, and they do use um, sweetened condensed milk in in Thailand to make iced coffee, and it just gives it a li different kind of depth of um, kind of a deeper milkiness almost because it's evaporated milk that's sweetened. But uh, so yeah, so those are the recipes um, for the. Uh, drinks and you know how to get the best deal on all of this right mm -hmm. you, right you um you get on um you get your wholesale points by ordering your first um uh, get, uh products up to um 100 points 100 product value and that's an easy thing to do and now in both countries you can do that by ordering what you want or ordering a starter kit um then you get an even better deal if you have them on your essential rewards and you get points back just for buying them to buy more stuff, which is fantastic. It's probably one of the most generous subscription uh, rewards points pro uh, programs out there. Um, and 
you don't let friends sip without oils, start sharing this with your friends. And they, you know, once they see how wonderful these are um, and want to get in on this, you sign them up and you can get a commission based on that. No selling, no smarminess, just sharing with your friends. So that is everything. Thank you so much for coming. I really appreciate it. And I hope that if you're watching this later, um, you let me know if you tried to get on and couldn't because of the link. I will go back and check out to make sure the other ones going forward are truly the proper link um, so that nobody has that problem. But yeah, so that is oil sip repeat. Wonderful. Thank you so much. I learned a lot. I took some notes and Good. I'm going to try some of these recipes and I'll definitely post in the Facebook group when awesome. I do. Good. I will post this um, uh, video onto the YouTube channel and then post a link in the group so that if you want to go back and check out the recipe again, it's really easy to do. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks for joining Jody. Yep. Good night, everybody. Perfect.